I'll tell you who's doomed. The career of this guy that spit on that fucking kid. <laughs> who, I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> and I and, and here the, everybody thinks I'm going to just eviscerate this guy. And I've spit on some children in my time, but they hit me first. Um, but no, I know what he was trying to do. I guarantee I know what he was trying to do. He was trying to be a heel, and he thought, well, this kid's reaching out to me, and if I spit my gum in her general direction. <laughs> but I know it looked to me on camera like he fucking had projectile vomiting from the direction they shot it. <laughs> but you could tell from the kid's look that she got wet and the fucking instantly the father reacts and the the wrestler kind of has that, well, that didn't come off like I intended body language as he turns to continue to walk to the ring. And then here comes Papa and is just wailing on this fucking guy. And... Uh, but then it was kind of, I don't know whether I was disappointed or not, because apparently Papa can't hit because he didn't put the guy down, even though he had him from behind and a few shots. But at the same time, the guy, kind of, I think, knew who it was and didn't want to fight back because he did just spit on the guy's kid. Oh, fuck. <laughs> which is just, say, once again, I, you know... I, I don't want to crucify the fucking guy. He should have done what he did, but but there's in the old days nobody would have thought anything of it. But here's another thing: in there was no security because there's most of the time at independent shows there's not real police, and as we'll talk about here in a few minutes when we get Smoky Mountain Wrestling, in the old days you were mostly most of the time in real arenas, or even if you weren't, if you were in high school gyms, you had local police, uniformed police that walked the guys to and from the ring. If it was the heels, nobody would have been allowed man, woman, or child to in a perfect world to walk up to the heels, to shake hands or do anything. And the heels were just worried about getting through the people without getting stabbed or punched or cut or whatever to. And then once they got to the ringside area in the ring, then they could start fucking healing for the whole building. You didn't, the crowds weren't small enough that you had to get heat with each person individually. Right. So, but now the guys are in these places, whether it be a high school gym or a rec center or whatever, and the security or the guys that set to fucking ring up. And it, it's not worth get on the floor getting in anybody's face or getting any heat like that with anybody just for the thought that whether they happen to be drinking or just fucking pissed off that day. And you said the wrong thing to him, and here we go. And then there's a lawsuit or something, whatever the fuck. It's not worth it. But this is a <laughs> another one of those byproducts of modern wrestling that you you can just go to each person individually and fucking make them mad. And also one one more thing, and, I, and as our new sponsor of the drive through, the law offices of Stephen P. New will testify to. I have found out in the past that assault is actually a prosecutable or assault a spitting is a prosecutable assault offense because something from your body has gone to theirs. So you can actually have somebody arrested for assault if they spit on you. Usually wrestlers don't just go out in the crowd and spit on fans unprovoked. Usually it's the other way around, obviously. Yes. But all the guys that worked for you in Smoky Mountain or anywhere else, did you ever have anyone that you were afraid they were going to hit fans or go out there and just not give a shit about any of these simple courtesies that the fans expect when they go to a wrestling show, like not getting punched or hit or <laughs> kicked or pushed or spit at? Well, a, a, a few, but I mean, you know, and New Jack, uh, I don't want to bring him up first, but New Jack w sweated so bad. And if he even, if he slung his head at you, people would say he spit on you, right? Because he was just a fucking human water fountain, but he would, he would test things a little bit. And there was some guys, you know, I had to, when Bad Buddy was there, not the time Good Buddy was there, but when Bad Buddy Landell was there, I had to get on him about cussing on a microphone because we couldn't do that back in those days either in most of our buildings and we just didn't do it, you know, did not get in the habit. Um, I never really had anybody that I thought is, I mean, even especially the fucking guys you would think Terry Funk, I trusted Terry. Terry Funk is probably the only guy that I would ever trust to go out over the rail into the audience that worked for me the whole time in Smoky Mountain wrestling, because I had seen him do it so successfully and so intimidatingly that he was never attacked and, and wasn't going to get me sued. I knew that. So I wasn't scared of him doing it, but some other fucking Yahoo did it. They wouldn't do it again. What about the uh, Bruce brothers? Well, the Bruce brothers. <laughs> 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 
I was never, except for the time when just, and that was a product of the bruises of Jimmy Del Rey and me and the guy that I was yelling at. And then Jimmy got physical with the whole thing. And then the bruises were more than happy to make our side the winners. And, but that happened. But uh, normally the bruises, I would have not thought would go out and get me sued in terms of going out and attacking somebody. I was pretty sure if anybody fucked with them, that they were the, whoever fucked with them was going to come out on the wrong end of it. But we did have a couple of street fight, gang fight matches where I actually okayed them going out through the Knoxville Civic Coliseum. <laughs> but also, okay, it was the it was Tom Pritchard and Jimmy Del Rey they were working with, and one of the things I said was, "Don't get me fucking sued." Uh, but you know, they they uh, they were intimidating. They were intimidating presence. But you know, but now especially, everybody's got to see. And then the cops were. Usually going to, unless it was just an egregious, just walk up and just beat the fuck out of somebody that didn't deserve it. They were our cops that we, that we paid every month to be there. So if somebody, the fans fucked up, they were used to believing that the fans fucked up anyway. So they would probably be on our side. People didn't have fucking camera phones. I barely could afford to have a video camera to shoot the matches, much less people shooting what happens in the fucking crowd. So it was a different time. You can't. And and plus, we always tried to have a better area for the guys to walk to and from the ring because I had been there. So I knew I always was, you know, tried to make sure the guys had good security whenever we could. I've mentioned a few months ago the time that one of the cops in one of those eastern Kentucky towns got mad at us for cheating. And Jimmy Del Rey, I had to put, get in between them to save Jimmy from going to jail. Uh, but, you know, you, you, there's a camera everywhere now. So I'd, I would say just try not to pick individual. And here's the other thing. Now, I always try to tell the Ring of Honor guys, <clears throat> even when you're going to the ring or you're at ringside walking around inside the railing, don't get up in an individual fan's face anymore because they won't run from you. They will laugh at you and you can't do anything about it and, they'll, and it'll bury you. In the old days, uh, uh, fans would not laugh. They'd either be so mad at the heel that there was no way they were going to laugh. They were they were straining at the bit to fucking punch the guy, or the guy you could make the guy so mad he wanted to do that. But nobody was laughing, and and if they did laugh, every once in a while, one of the boys would fucking probably shove him <laughs> forcefully back in his fucking seat, and the cops might turn their head. You never know, but you can't get away with that shit anymore. No, you can't. <laughs> 